me see here. Let me do my thing. Oh. Okay. All I'm right. Here. here. Uh, why do I act confused? That's because I am. I didn't expect you to be on so soon. <laughs> Live on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Brand. How was your weekend? Oh, it was good. Good. I went to a warm springs with the kids. I love oh, hot springs, cool. cold springs, and warm springs, and Wait, water just from the earth. Where, where are those? Utah, Arizona, Colorado, mainly. Okay. Oh, my God. I saw the most fascinating thing on Gaia, I think ancient civilizations or something. I can't remember what series about the Four Corners region. Apparently, mm -hmm. it is just incredible. All right, let me um, let me <laughs> stop this one and uh, all righty, live on YouTube. Okay, <laughs> new screen. I'm finally getting it. Takes takes a while for old people. Once I get it, I forget it again. <laughs> you have no excuse, girl. <laughs> All right, let's see the chat's uh, thread. Hopefully start uh, propagating. Mm -hmm. I love the pink this morning. Thank you. It's orange mostly. Well, it let's look. Kind of coral. Pink. Yeah, you're right. But gosh, it looks more pink there. Okay, goody. We're talking about colors, people. But um, we're not going to talk about that the entire time. Right? Right, Pamela? We were just what were we about, I'm like, what, what, what? <laughs> we were just talking about her, her um, weekend. Had a good time. I did too. I took the, a couple of the grandkids to um, uh, to Galveston to go camping. And they had such a good time. And Easton is just so sweet. He just, I love you, Aween. I love you. And kisses and kisses and kisses. For a Eric, said, Eric said, Mom, they're so cute until they're not. <laughs> <laughs> 13, there we go. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and take some, what do you want? Uh, first of all, Eric, I love you. He said, I love you too. Well, you say it every time you already know. He said, I'm proud of you. Your, your focus is right here, man. You're, you're just like doing it. You, you what? Got your, your Are focus you on your goals. You no, he said, no, he said, you've been making some goals lately to really help our country and he notices it because you're staying clear in your goals towards that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I aim to please. All right, let me see. Hello, everybody. Everybody's saying hello. I'm gonna go ahead and just randomly pick people. Um, oh, let me widen, make this bigger for my. Okay, Cody S, C-O-D-I-S. What is my mission in life? That's something everybody should know, really. Eric said, everybody should know it. However, they think that mission is an action. They think that missions are specific tasks that you do. And while that's a part of it, that's more of um, an alignment. So yours has to do with being an activator. And your mission is, he said, it's like a hat that you wear or a role that you play. So yours is activator. What you're really looking to ask though is not that. What you're really looking for is purpose. Because you can't start with mission. You can't put on a hat without knowing why. So <laughs> it, would, it would be like going, he said it would be like going to university and saying, I'm going to study to be an engineer, um, but I don't really know why I feel this way, which he said is a problem. Many people do that. They're like, oh, well, that just seems like something I'd be good at. Uh, then what? <laughs> no. Right. So with activators, he said they have um, unique things that they like to do. But for this person, it's the feeling. And for everybody also, it's the feeling where the purpose is always here. He points back to here. Your purpose is in your heart. You're here to master emotions. Your purpose will always be an emotion, a specific emotion. This particular person or everyone? Let me check everybody. All the squeaky toys. Oh, it's these. Would drive you nuts, but they just go crazy for it. I think it's because they do, you know, like they a, love a it. dying, a dying animal. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. So he said, with Cody, yours has to do 
with um, awareness and empowerment. Awareness of empowerment. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, because we all have power. We just that need to reclaim it sometimes, or at least we're not aware. aware. And this person in particular, where he is not aware of different cultural power systems that are too much in power. So there's you have to understand about disempowerment before you understand empowerment. So he's observing, or he or she, I think he is observing power systems in cultures right now and trying to understand that. Okay. All right, Race B. Hi, it's, uh, my name is Bella. Oh, like my dog. Uh, which will stop my nerve issues, CBD uh, lollipops or Nature Made CoQ10? Nature -made. Uh, neither. Uh, Eric said the CBD lollipops in most case, cases are not strong enough and are not sourcing their CBD naturally enough. Okay. Yeah. So in your case, that's you, you have to get the type, he says with CBDs, you have to get the type that come so purely, they have to, it has to be really concentrated and, and a, made in a certain way, you know, that's pure. Okay. Um, and highly concentrated. You can't just get CBD lollipops. Like cold pressed? Uh, yes, cold pressed. Yeah, and he says it tastes horrible. And in his words, tastes like ass. Um, <laughs> he says that to me. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that will help, but you need to get it. There, there's, there's a company, gosh, Eric, tell me the name. It's, it's in a white, it's in a white, um, mm. A white cardboard container that's like like a cone or like a cylindrical okay. shape. All right. With gold letters on it. He's showing me, but he's not telling me. That's okay. All right. Uh, Shannon Richards would love to hear from her friend Whitney. It's not what anybody thinks about when, when you think about heaven and you think about the other side and you think about, she said, my family was real conditioned on thinking what that means to be passed over. Um, all these places that we think we're going to are just constructs of our mind, heaven, hell, in between places, you can name it what you will, but our mind creates those constructs just like our mind created being on earth is what um, Whitney says. Okay. So it's just not what you think and, and it's amazing. It's an amazing experience to be out of the body. Awesome. Uh, but it's good to be here too. Sometimes mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like that, but all right. Um, Ashrani, C-H. Uh, I guess the first initials are, that's not, a, I mean, I can't be the whole last name. Maybe it is. Hi, is there a message from my dad, um, Jinendra Sharma? who passed 23 years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no, I hear my, uh, an echo. Let me turn my, I was hearing my own echo. When he came through, he made my whole microphone system echo back. I don't know if you guys heard that, but uh, I smell doll, yellow doll, <laughs> like, People in India know what that is, D-H-A-A-L. It's like lentils that's cooked with curry. It's so yummy. Mm. Yeah. So I smell that, and he said, um, tell someone with an S. I can't pronounce this name. Uh, it's okay. It's someone okay. Tell, tell her hello, someone with an S syllable, and I love you, and... Gosh, I wish that in a certain way, I do wish that I was here to see these changes on earth right now in a certain way for my family. Mm. Okay, uh, Rishiam Millie, can you channel my son? Now, she, she or he did not leave a, um, the, name, the first name of the son, but maybe it's a, kind of an unusual name. So can you tap into the son? Names, unless if I don't have pictures and eyes, I need names or voice because okay. I'm a vegetarian. All right, just kind of be sure y'all say yeah. the first name of your deceased. Vibrationally oriented. I know, very much, of course. 
Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Sabine B, I'm planning on moving to Germany within the next nine months. Where is the Germany German collective headed? In other words, is, is it a wise and safe mood? Eric said, don't make Pamela responsible for your safety, man. And now he says, Germans are doing so much better than Americans right now. Let me tell you, could be for most people a wise and a safe move to be in Germany and not America right now. Yeah, well, <laughs> true. Okay. Uh, Cynthia wants a message from Kai, K-A-I. Thank you. Now, I'm feeling like that's a male. Please correct me if you're there in live and if I'm wrong because I have a male and I just want to confirm that. He said, so shake it up. You don't like um, certain issues of the way that things are being taught in spiritual communities. Shake it up a bit. You're a catalyst. Shake things up. Get people's attention. He's like, shake it up. <laughs> Keep saying that. <laughs> That's good. So she's a catalyst. So she's a shaker and a mover. She is. And good. she's holding that back. Kai says, you're holding that back. That's, he does not like you. Why are you doing that? <laughs> What's the difference between an activator and a catalyst? Eric says, these are both missions, spiritual missions that people have in their contracts. Activators like to um, basically bring people into awareness of who they truly are without societal conditions and structures and, and like constructs and, you know, when the earth tells you who you are. Activators bring you into your own awareness of who you are, but they're a lot more gentle than catalysts. Catalysts, he's a catalyst in your face. <laughs> they're like really hard they're there to mirror the hardest components of you the hardest portions of you they mirror it back to you so that you see yourself whether you like it or not they're oh, mirrors i like that uh courtney gray you like it until it happens <laughs> yeah. if you're on the receiving end of it courtney graves any message from father-in-law victor nelson Talking about um, a female family member who is either passing or recently passed, because I get recent energy around that person. Okay. He said, well, she can't smoke now, you know, and she did, she, <laughs> when she was out of body, she was talking about, talking about a cigarette the whole time. Oh my God. When we all greeted her, I guess she has passed because he said greeted. When we all greeted her, we just like were there with a pack of cigarettes. Yeah, she can smoke to her heart's content now. <laughs> right maybe they don't want to after you pass if you're a big smoker you do like um eric says you create these little uh pockets of of energy that create environments for you that are very similar to what it was like that the with things you enjoy like dancing food cigarette smoking could be good or bad habits but you create a little place for you to do those things that you weren't able to do to experience okay Sarah Lee wants to know why she sleeps so much. I think it's to do with the shift. What's her first name? Sarah, S-A-R-A-H, Lee. I love Sarah Lee. She is cake, but it's spelled without an H. <laughs> Eric said, um, it's a little bit of a hormonal imbalance activated by improper eating. And of course your circadian rhythms, like your, your sleeping patterns are off really badly with all these things combined. Um, he said, I, he said, Pamela, I am really tired of people not eating well, not exercising well, not sleeping well. They don't like have any practice for themselves, you know, and then they're you know, wanting to meditate for 10, 15 minutes a day and then get up and eat a cheeseburger and then wonder why they feel bad. Uh -huh. Now, this is not Sarah. She doesn't do that. He wanted to make that clear. But as a whole, your, during spiritual awakenings, your whole body gets off and you need to take extra special care. He said, Sarah, you need to take extra special care to, you know, eat very, very well, very fresh foods right now. Okay. All right. So, uh, there's a squeak to I got it. As soon as you yeah. talk, <laughs> Eric said, there's so many. There's so many, he said. Done. Yes. Okay, Sheena wants to know, can you guide me on how to deal with my in-law separation? Mom comes for a shoulder to cry on, but I feel I carry the, uh, the negativity. 
And bye. I'm gonna go take care of you. Mm. It's so cute though. Eric said, it's a big responsibility in paths. So Sheena, you're very empathic and you have this, he said, you're like a sponge. You have this absorbent capacity, but people, they can't come dump an ocean over a tiny sponge. You need to realize where your cutoff point is. Where are your boundaries? When are you able to say, you know, mom, I need to go take care of something now, or I need to go and, you know, Maybe we can talk about it some other time. Like you have no cutoff point for how much you can handle. You just end up feeling guilty for her. And then you go let this keep going. So that's up to you to experience the boundaries without, without um, feeling guilty. Okay. Well, I only found two and I think there's five. So uh, she probably took them up to Lucas's room. Uh, okay. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, um, okay, Tracy Hall wants to know if Eric has any messages for her. He said, you're not bored. You're tired of Earth being the way it is. Mm. Like, people, when they say they're bored, it can, he said, it can easily lead to apathy. Apathy is more dangerous than depression because it's a lower energy than depression. So you're, when you try to tell yourself you're bored with the way that things are in this current environment in earth right now, tell yourself, um, you're, I'm not bored, uh, something else is happening. You're not bored, you're feeling stuck. But what if that's not even it? What if you tell yourself something else even beyond that? Because stuck feels yucky too. That makes you feel powerless too. So what if you're not stuck you just don't quite know what your new dream looks like yet, which is, you know, a little concerning for you. So what if you don't need to know? What if you give yourself permission to not know? Um, another thing, you don't live any ordinary moments. These aren't ordinary times. This is, these are bizarre times. Nobody's ever seen anything like this. Can you cut yourself some slack? Yeah. Mm. All right, so um, uh, let me see. For some reason, everything went down, so the first section is I can't, it disappeared. Uh, okay, um, Erna Offenbacher, maybe Eric's doing that. Erna Offenbacher wants to know what her mission mission is in life. You need compassion, and you need to teach people how to be compassionate towards others. You are compassionate towards others, maybe so much so that it's an overabundance of it to where it is not, you're not compassionate towards you. You give so much that you're not compassionate towards you. That's not, that's not loving to you. So you're understanding that balance with compassion right now, but you're here to teach people how to be compassionate. Okay. So I have, um, I keep seeing um, questions from people that don't leave their first name. Um, they, they have their handle, but they don't have their you know, YouTube handle, but not. Yeah, guys, I'm a vibrational channel, so I need. Yeah, yeah. Names. I put so that on the instructions, but uh, the instructions are too long. Probably that's probably a problem. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. Um, Deanna Carrillo wants to know if Eric can help her open her third eye. Nope. He oh, went, oh, well, how did she do it? He said, let me talk about this for a minute. Why are you guys worried about the upper chakras when you don't even feel safe in the lower ones? You don't even feel grounded in your root chakra. Put your feet on the ground, eat well, drink water, get your sleeping patterns managed, and then talk to me. If you can get your mind under control, then you can handle your third eye. But when you open your third eye, this reason why it's an upper chakra, we, we, don't, um, we don't do that. We don't open those first, it'll drive you insane. So how do we do that? What's the best way to cleanse and balance our chakras besides eating well and being grounded? 
I mean, listening to special chakra music no. or, I mean, or getting no. the, you know, he said all those are bypasses. You can do all those things. You can listen to binaural beats and they, all they do is open up your third eye. Okay. <laughs> so you can listen to drumming. That's one thing that you can do. And better yet, he's like, get yourself a drum. Drum mimics the heartbeat. Get yourself a drum and like, try to like feel your heartbeat and then mimic it with the drum. What about and singing bowls? Those are hard to do, though, some of them. No, they're up here. He's like, they're oh. hard enough for singing bowls. No matter what you do, they're such high frequency, which is awesome for healing depression because they start at the heart, most of them, connect you to your heart and all the way up. But maybe you're not ready for that yet. Maybe it is just that simple factor of putting your feet on the earth, getting proper sleep, staying away from the inner aisles of the grocery store and meditating for at least 20 minutes a day. You can't do all these other things and not do those basics and then expect to have a good time with your Kundalini. <laughs> He's like, your Kundalini is going to eat you um, So what kind of drums would you get? Um, any kind of... Not the electric. He want to make that. He's like, no, not any kind, pal. It can't be the electric. I mean, um, some Tibetan drums or Buddha drums or anything like like that. Buffalo hide drums and any. Um, I don't have any in my office to show you, but the Native American drums. Oh, okay, Native Americans. Okay. Yeah. Um, what about chanting, like Buddhist chanting? Does that help anything? He said, if you're a guy, it's helpful because you have a lower oh, tone. Yeah. To those, but if you're a woman, not so much. It just brings you straight up here. <laughs> but okay. you can listen to the Tibetan chanting, and that helps as well. He said, but if you guys, if you do all these little things, and then you're still not meditating, you still don't eat well, no. you still drink alcohol, you still smoke cigarettes, you, it's not going to work. What about, uh, like, um, things like that? There, there's um, certain tones that are like the lower... He's always told me there's two chants that are the most grounding, om and hum. hum. Those are the two. Mm -hmm. They make my lips tickle. Yeah, and he's wow. like, put your teeth together. You know, put your teeth together when you do it. <laughs> Let's see. Good morning. My name is uh, Janneke. Um, and are there any, I hope I pronounced that right. It looks like Janneke, but I bet it's. It's right. Are mm -hmm. there any messages for my grandmother, Roxy, who passed away from cancer? I'm seeing a yellow flower. I smell it too. She said, oh, they're coming up right now, this flower, and she's showing me it. Yeah, I'm getting really avid with gardening, so I should recognize these things, but they're, I don't recognize this particular one. It's not an American flower, I don't think. Oh, maybe it's the only one in the afterlife. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. She knew, she liked this flower. That's why she's bringing it up for confirmation. But Roxy said, you know, but spirits are like that too. We're still growing. I know that you have questions about my growth and I'm still growing, but I don't have to come back to do that. I don't have to come be in a body. Um, I'm not really ready for that. I'm growing. Okay. Debbie Burlisle, D-E-B-I. Hey everyone, Eric, do my spirit guides have any messages for me? So, yeah, Eric just did the little, he's so funny. He slides his whole body out of the way when another being comes forth and just uh -oh. did a little moonwalk. And just, oh, I know it was a moonwalk. I channeled that, I think. Like, I get to see him in my mind's eye. Are we in the 80s again? <laughs> he did that. So, we have a being here that's a spirit guide, and he is, I know this being, he's a member of one of the uh, Qumran Essenes group, ancient Essenes. Mm. So his name is Benjamin David. His name is Benjamin David. They had like double names, these, you know, oh. Jewish what, men. What are they? Are they ETs or the Native Americans? Are they from India? What? They're human. Yeah, they're just human, Aramaic, Jewish. Um, okay. They're a member of the Essenes back um, a long time ago. And this was a real private little sect. How do you um, spell, how do you spell Essene? E-S-S-E-N. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know now. I recognize <laughs> it. Got it. My yeah. southern accent just puts everything off. <laughs> I know. Um, so he says, you know, you, you are forgetting the basics of your healing touch. You, you're an activator with healing. He put his hand on your heart 
just to let you feel it. You said you're forgetting the basics of your healing touch. So he took your hand and he put it on your own heart and he showed me a sacred shape activation. I saw a, a different shape in there, a sacred geometry. I saw a shape in your heart moving around. Uh, we've been talking about that a lot <clears throat> on my Patreon channel, different sacred shape activations from the Essenes. But this one I'm familiar with is called the Diamond Coves. And this one I'm familiar with is called the Blue Diamond Coves. I've been teaching them for about maybe four months now. Yeah, so the Blue Diamond Coast? The Blue Diamond Code. A code, okay. She can imagine a diamond shape that's blue, oh. you know, and she can imagine that in her heart activating it. But he took your hand off your heart like this. He took it and then he put it towards my heart, like me as a symbol of clients or people that you want to help, you know, not me as a teacher. So he's like, he took it, he did it like that, um, putting your hand on someone else's heart to let you know that you can do the same for other people. Like this activation can help with other people. Well, would she benefit by going to your Patreon channel and? Maybe you know? looking up, I've got a class coming up called um, the, the Channeling of the Galactic Council of Nine that talk a lot about these type of activations and where they come from in history of mm -hmm. earth and beyond. Mm -hmm. So that's coming up on June 26th. You guys can find that on my website, but we talk all about these activations there. Okay. Um, um, Leslie Devaye, will I be able to reroute my life successfully? And probably she wants to know how. Leslie, um, Eric said, you, I've been talking to you and you went like this, I've been here. Or like, he was like really passionate about it. <laughs> and he said, um, you can't change your life without any, he, he like took your foot and he like moved it. It kind of reminds me, yeah, it does remind me that he, he said, it's like you, Pamela, when you were trying to learn dance, when you're a little girl and he was reminding me of this memory, like my mom walked in while the teacher was trying to teach me ballet and all the other students were at the bar, mm -hmm. like, you know, moving and doing the first, second, third movements and things you're supposed to do. The teacher was at me and she had my foot and she was moving into first, moving into second position, moving into third. <laughs> And my mom was like, that's it. She's out. She can't. She doesn't want to. So Leslie, that's a metaphor for you. Like there's movements that you need to make, actions you need to take in your life. And Eric's been clear that there are some relationships, one in particular, that you need to just flat out end, whether you're scared about, you know, if you can emotionally not be around that person or whether or not you should support that person. And he says, she's worried that that person's not going to be okay um, that's not your responsibility anymore. That's one action that you need to take. But there's three actions that you need to take to get your life back on track. You're still letting that person really emotionally control you and you're scared they're not going to be okay. And that's not fair to you. So that's just one of them. He was like, we could talk about this a long time, but you can't want your life to be back on track, but not set boundaries and not make changes that are necessary for your life to be on track again. Yeah. Okay. That's hard. That's By the way, shout out to Treasure Hustlers. Wait. What? <laughs> treasure Hustlers who, who are deleting messages that are inappropriate. They're moderating for me. So thank you so much. Um, you, treasure Hustlers. That's a cool name. Yeah, I love it. All right. Will, will I be pregnant soon? Uh, Renata Di Paolo wants to know Will I be pregnant soon with our rainbow baby? Eric said, just focus on baby. Rainbow babies are hard. Really, really hard, mom, hard. <laughs> He's like, so the challenge right now is the amount of things that you're trying to do. It's actually not your body. You think it's your body, but it's the amount of projects you have. You can't have all these projects and be getting ready to be pregnant. Like something needs to shift. There's a logical change you need to make about having too much on your plate. Okay. Uh, let's see, um, Kim Dorney, good morning, so nice to see you both. I've been ill for four years, I'm starting to get better. What happened? Why did I have a foreign accent for so long? Cool. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, that's happened to me, by the way. When I got back from Australia, oh. I empathically just pulled forth the Australian accent for like a year. It was so funny. Empaths and channels do that. So he wanted me to share that experience with you because you are channel and you're channeling some other period of time in your life that you were strongly pulling back that mastery. So when you start to have that memory of that other time in a past life, 
your, your vocals may take it on so that you can activate that portion of yourself that needs to remember that past life for a certain level of mastery that you wish right now. Okay. And also I want to remind people not, to not ask more than one question. I see that going on here. Eric said, be fair, man, be fair. It's hard. It's hard. <laughs> uh, all right. So Lisa McCoy wants to know if uh, she will get a promotion this year and move back to San Diego. San Diego. The anchorman. Eric said, you just got to make that happen. You're, and you're a powerful person. You're a powerful manifester. Okay. So, how do you do that? Oh, go ahead. He said, is is not what you think there's going to be some big changes that cause for you to get a promotion but for you to also be overworked so that's really really hard um he said san diego okay you need to be there but for the rest of society i'm just gonna say it's not the place to be okay all right now okay i see people wanting messages but they're not leaving the deceased's first name <laughs> Eric said, give me the name. I know, I know. Okay, so uh, um, Cindy uh, Martini wants to know if her mother, D has any messages. He, she's showing me a leaf, and she said, you know how leaves take on that energy from the sun, and they really need the sun, and they can't grow without it. And they absorb it into their whole cells and you can just watch it if you put a leaf in front of the sun and watch how that works you need that as medicine right now you don't get enough of that you literally do not get enough sun oh wow that's and you're like she said you're also low on vitamin d3 so you yeah, take a lot take that and get sun to make sure that the d3 is absorbed almost uh, so many i mean a large majority of our population is you know low in in d all right uh let's see eric have you met bashar and uh, or abraham before it's from imp not just empire entertainment events but we don't need a first name for that yep and yep he said <laughs> what do you think about it he said um so bashar is a non-sentient being you know he doesn't have he, people humans learn with sentience with feelings Oh, wow. They learn from, that's their way of learning and their intelligence is heart, is, is central intelligence of the heart. The Shar's central intelligence is the mind. So you guys sometimes think he's an asshole. He's not. He just has a different way of learning than you guys understand and you're looking for him to, you know, you know, give you some deep spiritual advice about love. That's not the being. That's an Abraham thing. <laughs> hey, okay, what about Abraham? Um, he really likes Abraham. Okay. Is that a one entity or is it a group? Abraham's a group. Bashar represents a group, but it's one being. Oh. When you have a difference, like with the galactic councils, you yeah. have sometimes a, a face that comes to speak for them. So Bashar speaks for a council. Oh, um, I see. Andromedan in nature. And then Abraham speaks for a council that is primarily Pleiadian, but a, a lot of different sentient races. Oh, that's so fascinating. You identify more with them because of the way they learn. Okay. All right, Linda, uh, you need to give the mom's first name, baby. Uh, Lindsay Cave. Um, wait. Lindsay Cave, which areas do I need to work on personally to enhance my spiritual self and my vibration? Which what does she need to work on? Which areas? Lindsay uh -huh. Cave. <clears throat> Mm. So the way that Eric and many beings talk about spirituality to me as a teacher is that it comes in emotional levels of mastery. There's like stages of spiritual evolution. And one of them that he talks about is acceptance. Acceptance means you have to trust and you have to be discerning about when and with whom and how and all those things. So it's kind of a big deal that you're going through that right now. So acceptance, you, you can't have that without trusting. Acceptance is really misunderstood. <laughs> okay. Time out. What highlights? I mean, your highlights are really pretty. How, what, how do you do it? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Somebody does them for me, and I don't know. I just let in. I just really trust them. Oh, My hair is wow. great. Yeah, fabulous. And <laughs> 
All right. Uh, all right. Let me see. Oh, Stacy Allen needs help, caregiver help, please. Am I doing it right? So she's obviously a caregiver. Is she doing it right? Or any advice for her in that area? Eric said, you know how sometimes old people can kind of go back to being babies when they start to lose their memory and lose their capacity to function. It's like taking care of a baby. Yeah. So there's a middle stage before they get there where they still have mind capacity a lot and they're still really yeah. sharp, but they're also like dipping in and out and you don't know like what level they're aware and what they're not. So whoever she's taking care of is there's somebody she's taking care of that's doing that. It's kind of dipping in and out of stages of awareness. And that's really hard. So that is, um, he said that that's a sign of dementia is oh, what yeah. that is. Yeah. So that dementia is really, really hard. And there's also a strong physicality to it as well, where this person who asked the question feels really guilty about the fact that they have like a really hard physical condition that's very painful. So between those two things, keep in mind that if you enable that person too much, then it can be bad for you as the caretaker. You won't get any rest. You won't get any care. And you can't put your oxygen mask on that other person when you don't have it on yourself. So you need to be aware of when they're kind of messing with your head or not. So yeah, take care of yourself first. Mm -hmm. I mean, self-care is so important for caregivers and it's so often. She feels guilty when she does is what he's saying. Well, and that's, it's just it's guilty. guilty if you, if you, if you don't, because then you're not going to be in a better position to take care of who you're taking care of. I think, I don't know. My... Caretaking is like, you have to have so much compassion, but sometimes empaths have so much compassion towards other people that they're being unloving to themselves. It's something mm -hmm. that he observes a lot. All right, Fernando, Fernanda Blanco, do my spirit guides have any messages for me? And Nikki, I need your, uh, next time you, uh, you know, be sure you give the name, your first name for your grand, grandpa, okay? But go for ahead. For that person, yeah. he said, um, so it's temporary, it's temporary. Just, just say this to yourself about your current situation. It is temporary. Um, you can't attempt to understand things that are insane. You can't attempt to make insanity sane. You can't look at things that are crazy and just suddenly try to make them look sane. So that's what you're going through with somebody in your life right now. And it seems to be a repeat pattern that you keep attracting more of that. And you're like, why am I attracting this? So he said, I just want to tell you that sometimes um, modern spiritual teachings, like in, the, in today's times, there's a lot of teachings that teach that kind of take law of attraction and put it back in your direction that everything you see um, is something you're doing wrong. That's so, that hurts trying to believe that because that's not always the case. I know, it's true. And in this case, it's not your case. So this is all, earth is like a simple game until we make it really complicated. I need you to look at that and just understand that pain is temporary. Okay. Now, Hugh, H-U-E, last initial Q, can I ask about my career in this economy? Careers are shifting, particularly this one, Eric said. Everybody's, but particularly this person's, is shifting to the extent that it's just not enough to financially be fully conducive in the way that it was, but it's shifting. Doesn't mean you need to stop doing that. So, this person has a particular knack for financial advice and financial advising and, and stocks and market value systems. And it's just, they're going to be very interested in it. Okay. So um, he said, keep your mind on something that goes in that direction where you understand investments right now, because you guys may be thinking now it's not the time to invest, but you're not right. You're not right. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, now, you know, there the, a poll came out recently about uh, how the majority of the population thinks our country is out of control. In what way is it out of control? I mean, who is causing the, this out of control, this chaos? Governmental systems, he says. Ugh. Just like, out of control. He's just like control systems is what it is. He's like, do you guys think by any means that, you know, every four years, 
there's this control tactic. And then, you know, you guys get scared and you let it happen a little bit and then you get tired of it and then four years. And, and but now in 2020, it's almost every four minutes. I know. We so, try to get, yeah. You know, we try to get out of this pandemic, you know, and, and it's primarily a fake pandemic. You know, what are you really getting out of? Yeah, I know. You know it, it, it's real, but it affects, it's death rate is like this. I know. know. It's a scan, scandemic. And then there's one directly following it. When we calm down from our civil unrest, from racial war, then there'll be something else. And then they'll be, saying, they're just slamming this at you. And are you going to deal with it? Are you going to buy it? You know, what are you going to do? Are you going to buy this fear? This fear? So it's really what you're saying is the global elite is ca causing all this, like they someone in their ranks is paying. He said, you know, they got you. Uh, he said, you guys know that they want it to be like an Orwellian state. They want it to be like Animal Farm over here. <laughs> so, yeah, so they're, they're pretty much causing the chaos, paying off rioters and, mm -hmm. okay, good. I mean, bad, but whatever. Um, Lisa McCoy wants to know who is uh, her spirit guide or spirit guides. Eric said, you know, you guys, when you ask me this question, like every time you think another thought, you're such a multifaceted, you're multidimensional being. So you're on one path to learn something. You have a spirit guide for that. Your thought shift, you're working on a different level, a different lesson. You have a spirit guide for that. So this is the analogy he gives me about spirit guides and why it's pretty futile to focus on who is your spirit guide. Um, you have thousands. So it's sort of like you're the star player in a football game. And you look around, say this is NFL, and the stadium's full, and they're like, you know, Eric, 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 and they all want the star quarterback to look at them and be like, yeah, I'm your guide, man, I'm your fan. But you have thousands. Okay, that's awesome. I need thousands. So you focus on Wendy, one, it doesn't matter, you're gonna get a different one. <laughs> I know, Wendy, you wanna ask about your grandpa who died, but I don't know his first name, so. Anyway, the bad guy, Tony Tone, I think, it's her name is Carmen, but I can't, I can't believe. I think that's I'm, true. Um, yeah. my question today is, does my higher self have anything to tell me? <laughs> higher self said, peace is not something that you have to work for. Peace is not earned. It's not a reward for struggle. Peace is the product of your journey and it happens along the way. So what you're really looking for when you say, I just want peace, man, you're, what you're really looking for is contentment. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, Ashrani, you're asking another question, but we only have, we can only ask one. Okay. Just to remind you for next time. Belinda Mayers, do, uh, do you have a message on the growth of my spiritual ability? Eric, as one of my guides, do you have a message on the growth of my spiritual abilities? He said, I'd like to make it real simple for you. And more modern society, we look at spiritual growth as being, yes, I finally got a vision. My third eye opened. And what I would like to, I would like to bring it back to a place of, you walked an elderly person across the street. Um, you know, I would like to bring it back to, to a place of not somewhere to go. You're not, spiritual growth isn't something that you can attain. It's markers on the journey, like a treasure hunt. And you are desiring a lot more clarity. Where you are right now in your treasure hunt, in your journey, like the, 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 the most, the clue that I dropped for you had to do with clarity and trusting your discernment. And in order to do that, you need to focus on a specific universal law. Um, Eric's taught me a lot of things, but what I taught him was universal law. <laughs> oh. and I talk about it all the time. And he, we talked just yesterday about the universal law of specificity. So that's what he wants to bring up for her. So in the law of specificity, it's like you look at something and you have like this razor pointed focus on it and you just don't look anywhere but that. And when you have that, you cut through all the distractions of the world. You just cut through it 
so that new creation can flow through you and keep flowing without distractions. So for her, spiritual growth is happening, but she gets easily distracted. So he's like, use this. Look at what is the law of specificity when you can look at things that you actually believe and taking specific steps towards things you actually believe and focusing on them like a razor. That's, that's what you need to do right now. Okay. All right. So just a quick announcement. I can't or won't answer, uh, uh, pick anybody who asks more than one question who does not give their first name. And if it's about a deceased, that person's first name. And for pe people who keep repeating in the chat thread, the same question over and over again. So, I mean, that's part of the rules. So I mean, I just, for the future, you need to remember that I will automatically not pick you. Um, Okay. Yeah. And, and repeat quick. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's see. Uh, oh yeah. Felix. O. who was I in my most recent uh, past life? Eric said time doesn't work that way. It uh, doesn't, it's not linear. Oh, it's so what is the life that most influences current one? We'll do that one. It could be future, future or past. He said, I can't teach you this without teaching you this. <laughs> so what we think of as you know past lives we think this is us right now and this is the most recent and then maybe this one and then maybe this one and we think of the future that way too we think this is where we are now and then we're going to grow and then we're going to get this way he's like it's not like that so what it really looks like is this you're here and you expand, and then upon this expansion, it looks more like this. These are lives, and then you need to look at it this way. Take this, understand that these are lives. It's not this way, it's not linear, it's this way, and then you look down upon it and understand that wherever your highest level of mastery is, that's what that's gonna be like. So when you go to readers and they're like, this is your most recent experience. It's not recent, it's most mastered. It's what, what they're picking up on. So hers has to do, this person's- no, Felix. Felix, oh. Okay. Well, you, got, you picked up on it, lab uh, Lil, angry Lil Angry Bitch. So maybe you're picking up from that, but I think the first name is Felix. Okay, let me ask for that one. That person has a complex with power. They have an authority figure problem. They don't like authority for a unique reason because they were the person in power. They were a pharaoh in Egypt. So it's not recent. It's like, what did you master most? You were in power in a certain way. And then you retracted that and went, huh, I don't like that. I can actually bring power to the people. And you led people back into their own power but you are not like most sparrows. Cool. And, okay. Most sparrows didn't do that, Eric said. <laughs> it was the opposite way around. Now, Kathleen, oh, well, let me tell you one. I remember uh, Eric had a couple of other analogies for, for lives. He would say, look at them as a stack of books. Each one is, you know, all, all, all the lives you're currently living, but your consciousness is focused on one book that you're opening and reading. Exactly. Or he uses a wagon wheel where your higher self is the hub and all these folks are different lives. Yeah. And, and it's rolling and leaving a linear track in the mud, which is the yeah. linear track. And you're it. just picking up on them as you need be. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right, Kathleen Brueggemann, are there spirits visiting me at night? He said, you know there are. You have to ask me just to confirm why you know there are, because I've told you there are, and they have done weird things where they've said your name or they've said certain things or left you in a certain state whenever you're trying to wake up. <clears throat> um, Melissa Marr wants to know if there are any messages for her. So what about planning? You're thinking that you need to plan. You're thinking you need to prep for something. So a lot of people have been asking this question about prepping, about should they store food? And I think this person's been planning or prepping or thinking, should she plan or prep? 
And Eric's answer to that, like, should you be prepping your food and your supplies right now? He said, you think I'm going to say something, but I'm not. I'm going to say the different thing. You're not, you guys aren't expecting this. I think you should prep. And I'm not trying to make you afraid. I just think that if you're prepping for being prepared, if you're preparing for the feeling of being prepared, that's a powerful focus right in front of you that you can understand and it makes you feel safe. Therefore, you're less aligned towards disaster. So I'm not telling you this because some stuff's about to go down, although it might be. I'm telling you this because you need that safe feeling and that's what prepping does. Okay. Now, Jen, last initial E, um, hi, Eric, have you been able to hang out with my boo bug? How is she doing? You know, she's visiting me and should I, what should I be looking for to acknowledge her presence? Asking dreams, that's, you guys are so picky about confirmation and what you would believe is confirmation and spirits try to talk to you. And this one in particular is trying to talk to you, but then your mind goes, oh, you know what? I just probably made that up. <laughs> so you guys need to ask in dreams and keep a dream journal because you're so quick to forget. Like we come to you a lot in your dreams and we say very specific things. We come to you in meditation. Um, we try to come to you in your thoughts. We, we implant thoughts and you know it's us, but then you're like, well, that was something he would do. But then you just brush it off. And as long as you keep brushing it off, it's hard for us to really keep, like we, we keep looking for different ways, but you keep kind of doubting everything. Okay. Uh, let's see, Lisa Phillips. <clears throat> My name is Lisa Phillips. My grandmother who raised me has been, has been passed uh, a long time now. Her name is Ruby, but we call her Mammy. Please, can I get a message from her? I love you. I was known for my hugs, so here is one. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, Jeffrey Hodgson, do my guides have any message? Higher self said, I need you to be here now. Don't ask us where's the, the quickest place to start for the best potential. Where you start is right where you are with what you can handle right now in any small way. And then all the bigger messages that you keep asking us for will come. But you need to be where you are and who you are. With, be with what you feel. Be here right now. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, Haley Monroe. Just wondering if there are any messages for me. Music. Music is key. Stop. When you stop um, listening to music, um, you also stop just being your complete self. Okay. M. Mario. Good morning, Eric. Is this my karma, what I've been going through these past three years? Will I ever be loved by a man? He said, so you know how people tell you in modern teachings that you can't ever have a loving relationship unless you love yourself first? It's bullshit. <laughs> okay. So that would leave the majority of people way out in the dust. That would be such a cruel, you think Source would do that? That would be such a cruel thing. We learn from loving other people. But when we love people who aren't loving to us, then we go backwards. So you have a pattern of sending out your love almost unconditionally to people. They pretty much just use you up and spit you out. It's horrible. You've had a horrible experience. It's not your karma. Karma doesn't really work that way. Karma is not here to punish you. You're not carrying it over from some other lifetime because you're, you, did, you, you were a horrible person and now you need to make up for it. That's not how it works but you are choosing this because you're a loving person. You just need to stop being so loving to people who cannot love you back. And that is it. Okay. Just be really content with that understanding. And this, this can shift. <clears throat> okay. Sylvia, no, uh, first Kimberly Ruppelt. Uh, yeah. Any messages from any loved one? We don't have a name, but I don't know if she can. That's not clear enough. Oh, okay. That would take me 10 minutes. At yeah. least. <laughs> Sylvia, I found a blog. Okay, I think hopefully treasure hustlers <clears throat> will go ahead and there's a thing called put user in timeout so their message is deleted. If anybody asks more than once or, uh, you know, repeats the same question or asks more than two questions or does not give the, either their first name and the deceased first name, or you know, obviously both. 
so so we can just get rid of all this i mean there's too much um to, to filter through so i don't know if that'd be too hard for her. sylvia <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, I found a blog on a guy named Donald Marshall and the cloning centers. Is any of it true? Are celebrities and politicians really getting cloned? Mm. Eric said that we're nowhere near that. Um, what you need to be concerned about mostly since our technology isn't there. Um, the only thing that we can do is like save portions of our brain cells so that we could people could do that but you can't just bring them back and have another them. We're not there in our technology right now. Um, not with humans, but they are playing around with that, uh, creating weird uh, things. I don't even, he said, they're not even really, they're not humans. There's some cloning going on with animals and with combinations of species. And it's like, and it's people playing God, scientists playing God, that's going on. Um, there's very hidden components of government. But what you should really be concerned about is the fact that AIs are going to be wiping out human jobs. That's more of my concern than cloning is that, you know, look at Tesla cars. They can practically drive themselves. And what are you going to do if you get a truck that way? And then all truckers are out of jobs. And then we have 10 to 13% of our population not out of jobs from Corona. Yes. Because of AIs. Yes, that was a fear with the horse and buggy transformation to the automobile. But mm -hmm. with automobiles and with AI, you have to have people making them, people making the robots that make them, people make the, sparks, the companies that make the spare parts and this and that and fix them, etc. So, you know, that's not necessarily the case, Eric. <laughs> He's like, well, mom, drivers need jobs too. Drivers need jobs. <laughs> yeah, but the, there's the... Usually disrupt, disruptive technology ends up creating more jobs, so. He said that's true too though. Okay. Ha ha, no, uh -huh. I, I, you're right in this case. But, he uh, said you uh, got me mom, it's <laughs> true that. <laughs> <laughs> but well, I mean, you don't have to make whips for horses anymore, but okay, well, I think we still do. Latest, I'm sorry, but you didn't give us a name uh, from a person. Veronica um, Creek, Eric, is there anything I need to know? Oh, I skipped Kim. Kim's happy. So he said, so going back to planning and planning for the future, I need to talk to you about this too. You may be able to like stock your food and plan with money and budget, but you can't plan love. You can't plan that. We don't manifest love in the way that we think that we do. But if you can surrender to the concept of love coming without a specific person's name on it and without a certain way that you think it's going to be, allow that to just kind of create each day and to create each create each experience and then you can understand love if you can see what you want in every one that's important okay oh, by the way eric i have two inventions that i'm patenting uh, will either of them or both of them be successful i mean successful to to my satisfaction i'm trying to raise money for the spiritual online school in part but he said it's opposite of what you think. You think that one's more practically doable because it's smaller and more feasible. And yes, it's not that one that's going to start your start, even though that does well, that actually takes more time than you think to actually get buyers. So that's the problem with that is the, like it's, it doesn't sell the way you think it does, but the other one you're thinking that's going to be a problem and it's not so much a problem and you'd be surprised. Oh, good. Ooh. Well, it's a little bit more complicated, but okay. Uh, let's see, Kim Cat. Any messages for me from uh, uh, S. Kevin Baker? Sorry, I skipped you, Kim. He said, "What if you just?" He said, "Kim, Kim, what if you just didn't think about purpose anymore? Straight up, what if you just said, i 'I'm here to be joyful and to play and to have fun.'" And he said, like, what's that going to do? Is that going to piss you off? Really? You're, you, what if you're just here to have a great life and to enjoy being human? And what if we just drop this whole purpose thing is what this spirit is saying. Just drop it. Yeah. <clears throat> now, Sam Path wants to know when um, his or her company will sell. 
is Eric says it's got a big roadblock in the way. It's a location, location, location problem. Even though you wouldn't think that it is, it's the buyer's location is a problem. They have some specific laws that are blocking them even utilizing, uh, but they are the right buyer. There's somebody that is here or will be here very soon because I get present energy around it. And there's a problem. So Eric can't tell you when. Um, you just need to put it out there and let it sell whenever it does sell. Okay. Um, all right. So will there be another COVID, pen, uh, a wave of COVID? And if so, will it do significant damage to our economy? Or will they do things differently and not do a lockdown, but just quarantine old people like me? Um, he said they, they don't, generally speaking, don't let most countries out of lockdown completely. And by the time they do, then we're straight back in, but we don't go in the same way. It's like a completely different, we have um, different ways. He said there's going to be different ways, but they're going to sell you this plan that, that talks about contact tracing and they're going to be like, well, guys, you can have your freedom if you just allow contact tracing. Okay. You know, and he says it real sarcastically. Mm. It's like it's going to be on your phones. It's going to be everywhere. If you want your freedom, just, you know, submit to us completely with this tracing. So this is the problem for the next pandemic. Yeah. That, and it well, will but, happen and it's created. It's completely created. It's not it's so much. You can do research for the death count. People yeah. are will, will the economy suffer greatly from that second wave he I said mean, small businesses are suffering and then but but then a powerful thing happens that by the time small business are starting to recover just now they're starting to do different things and they're starting to recover and by then they will be in business with each other small businesses and businesses with each other and it's very local and very product oriented for local towns and what and, and just like selling to local people and basically small businesses start to actually flourish by the middle of the second pandemic because they're getting smarter so the government's not expecting that that we we stand up and small business owners we we're like nope we're not going to let our businesses fail we're going to change things about our businesses etc so it's going to be better than you think with small businesses bigger businesses yeah. start to collapse though so in that way that affects the economy temporarily yeah. and then the government is going to push a bunch of money into our economy because big businesses are failing and by midway through second pandemic small businesses are coming back like big time oh that's good i guess it uh, is good he said we've been needing that and that's the yeah. thing that's the gold at the end of this rainbow is that we need that was do the global eat have something some other evil plan like an october god tomorrow? they always do like this whole year is, is one it? thing after a next well, what do they have planned right before the election to try to, um, you know, pretty much subvert the will of the people. I hate when I see bad things. I just get real sensitive about it. It's, um, well, we don't have to answer that. It's a, it's a terrorist event. They're planning that next. Ugh. All right. Well, assholes. Ugh. All right, I guess we'll close up now. Sorry if I didn't get to your question. I see somebody asked a health-related question. That, too, is on the no-no list, and that will put people in timeout as well. So um, anyway, but I'm, I'm sorry I'm being such a bitch, but I, I don't. I just, we just need to help a lot of people yeah. and help as many people. Yeah. Help things take yeah. me 10 minutes to get into. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you, guys. And you guys check out Pamela at PamelaAirLand.com, and I will put all her links in the description box. Yeah. Bye. Big, I love you, Eric. I love you, Pamela. And I love you guys out there. Bye. Bye. <laughs>